Welcome back to the Sunday footy show for Inside the Ten, joined by Michael Shamus, Brent Reid and Andrew Webster. Good to see you all. Danica. Danica. All right, well, plenty to get stuck into. Let's talk, first of all, Cameron Munster last night, an absolute masterclass for the Melbourne Storm. Uh, did that prove that they need to do whatever they can to keep him? Well, it's a good theory, Danica, right? But practically, it can't happen. I mean, they spent money on Jerome Hughes, Ryan Pappenhaus and Harry Grant. You can't break the bank for Cameron Munster because who are you going to put around them then? It's... There's a salary cap and they've used a lot of money on those other guys and they're limited in what they can spend on Cam. So in theory, you can say they should break the, break the bank to keep him. But what sort of side are you going to have moving forward if you, if you spend millions on Cam Munster? You, you, you just won't be able to fill the squad out. I mean, there's no way they win a premiership when oh, yeah, you, you're it. surrounded with Neville. This is the puzzling thing I find with this. They should have... I know far be it for me to tell the Melbourne Storm how to spend their cap. Um, and they have a lot of players... You've done it in the past, of... Webby. No, I haven't. <laughs> Don't start, mate. Well, we're, we're less than a minute in. Yeah. Um, but I would have had Cameron Munster at the front of the line. I think he's their best player, and I know they had to keep those other blokes, but he's only 27. He's done more than anyone else at that club. I would have made him the priority, and I understand how, um, you know, they had, he had a change of management and those other players are coming off at different times. But you keep do whatever you can to keep your best player at the club, and he showed last night that he is still the best player at the Melbourne Storm. How much did last year, the incident after the season with the white powder, how much did that rub Melbourne up the wrong way? Because we know they were quite upset with the incident last year. Yes, he, he's a million-dollar player. There's no doubt Melbourne's offer at 750 is well below what he's worth. He can get a million-plus on the open market. But how much of that is, you know, their hope that he can be loyal to the club? They've obviously been loyal to him through a lot of things over the years. million dollars, one-two if the Dolphins pay that. As Cameron Smith, Smith said the other night, you walk every day of the week for four or $500,000 more. I would say there's a difference there with um, whether you're saying go for Cameron Munster first. The Dolphins were initially sniffing around um, Jerome Hughes and Harry Grant. So they had to act on those two guys because that's where the Dolphins' focus, focus was. It was initially on those two guys. It was only after they missed those two guys that they moved to Cameron Munster. So, I mean, I think Melbourne's hand was forced a little bit in that respect. They had to act on those other two manage. guys. No, but I, I get that. But as I said, you keep your best player. And at the moment, he's their best player. Do you think they've had their hands tied behind their backs because they did the other contracts well, that's, first? Well, that's the thing. They've now... run out of cap space and now they're trying to get him to take unders to stay. Where the cam and look, from all, from all the indications are the camera Munster doesn't want to leave. Yeah. Do we but, think, but do we if think it comes they'll down, let him if, leave? Do you think, like, with all the talk around the Dolphins... Well, one year early. One year early. He's still contracted oh, for another year. Well, you, we've all seen this how many times in the past where Does someone signs two years Will in Will he agitate, end. really, after what he's of been through? He with yeah, of course he will. Of course he will. I don't think he will. I don't know if he's got that in him. Can, you, can you see Cameron taking a pay cut and staying at the Melbourne Storm? Or, uh, thinking also, you know, they have stood by him through incidents well, in the past. They have. He owes them a lot of loyalty, but maybe not $400,000 worth yeah. of loyalty. If, they, if Melbourne get to about nine nine fifty, 950 and the Dolphins offers it one one one, then you'd like to think that the, the pass counts for something. But if it's at seven fifty and it's the Dolphins are 1-2, then it's the nature money. of the beast, yeah. Mm. All right, well, did the match review committee get the decision right in Nathan Cleary's punishment? Uh, he avoided suspension. He was just charged for that tackle on Billy Walters. What were your thoughts on this one? I don't get it. I thought it was too... And this is no disrespect to Nathan. I'm not saying it was intentional, but that's a really bad tackle that probably warranted two matches on the sideline. I know if you're talking about um, sending the right message to the mums and the dads and the kiddies out there, that's, that's got to be a punishable offence. A $1,000 fine just doesn't cut it. For mine, it's a, bigger, it's a bigger discussion that needs to be had. If you're trying to get rid of... Like, I mean, we had the crackdown with head highs last year with Magic Round and then the NRL do, does what it always does and backs away and forgets it within a month. If you're worried about duty of care to players, then they have to work on these dangerous t tackling techniques to get them out. Giving Nathan Cleary a $1,000 fine for that tackle, that's just not... That doesn't send the right message. As a game, I think we're confused about what's dangerous. We saw Tyrell Fumona in the trial with the... In the yeah, it was in the trials, wasn't it? it um, with Hayes Dunster there, that injury he had... If you look back yesterday with Cameron McInnes mm -hmm. and that tackle on Ryan Pappenhausen, what, what's Cameron McInnes supposed to do there? Like, he fell, he fell awkwardly and he could have been seriously injured, but the guy's getting away from him. He's supposed to let, let him go and, and get away. Nathan, I guess, a little bit different there, Webby. He had him in that position. He brought him down with that leg around. But he wrapped it around. He wrapped it around. But, oh. but, but was yesterday <laughs> he was put on a port, Cameron McInnes, and he was penalised. And it was a pivotal moment of the game. I think Melbourne went down and scored. He avoided all punishment, though. He wasn't even fined for... Cameron uh, McInnes, so he wasn't fine for that. He was penalised. There's a lot of things happening on field different with when we're getting off the field. You know, the match review committee are looking and thinking, OK, that's not, a, that's not even something we're going to look at. You know, it's completely different what's happening on the field and what's happening off the field. I've got no issue with the Cleary charge. 
I think it's fair enough. I, I, I don't think it's your classic hip drop. I don't know what they... The charge with dangerous contact, was it? Dangerous end? contact, But yes. I don't think you need a label for it. You don't need to put a name on the type of tackle. It's just dangerous. We need names for people. Maybe the match you might have to does. give that a name. But, but I mean, like, like a couple of weeks ago, Peter Volandis put the whole competition on notice for slowing down the ruck. Well, why don't it put the whole competition on notice for dangerous wrestling techniques that are going to probably end a career at some stage? Well, they've stage. been on notice for that stuff for... Ten years. Oh, well, obviously, it really they? worked. They gave Nathan Cleary a thousand dollar fine. <laughs> well, I didn't think it was that's that. not on notice. On top of his one point five million dollar extension. Well, yeah. yeah. Speaking of, let's quickly touch on that. Five years for Nathan and Ivan. What did we think of this? Is a five year deal? Are we fans of it? Are we fans of the long term mm. ones? I think it's a no brainer with with those yeah, two. Yeah, it's, you could go ten years. He could have kept going with Nathan. Yeah, twenty twenty seven. I think it'll be thirty. At that time, I think you know we've seen pay, uh, players before and clubs taking risk with Tal Malola. I think he still has six more years on that million dollar a season deal. I think Nathan Cleary is a sure as, sure as yeah. bet as you could get. And how much is it? Exactly how much is it? Well, this, it's going to be hard to determine because the, the CBA for next year and going forward is, is not determined yet. So it might, as you've written, it might go up to 1.3, 1.4. I think it's 1.1 next year. And if the, the salary cap increases... Oh, so we'll disagree there because I don't think it's 1.1. So I, sure, I think it's more than The new part of the deal. Next year. And he had two years left on that deal. So it's only it's a three-year extension. Not a, you know, he already had two years left on his current deal, uh, Nathan Cleary. I think with a three-year extension, you guarantee you will compete for premierships for the next five years. Well, he was the more important one for me. You had to keep Nathan. You know, Ivan, great coach, obviously won the comp last year um, and, and helps you compete as well. But I think Nathan was the key for me. And the fact he's taken less money to stay, he's effectively taken a pay cut for those remaining three years from what he was on. I mean, mm. there's obviously kickers in the contract and the salary cap goes up. Knock on Dad's door as well. He got yeah. looked after. One, what one, one, I mean, one, <laughs> 1.1 million, $1. million a year. How does he live on that? Yeah. Know, would, that wouldn't be, be your really lifestyle, really would it? <laughs> 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 All right, um, we've got to talk about this one. Justin Pascoe, CEO of the Tigers. <laughs> I don't know whether this is bad timing or not, but he's gone on a holiday with the family up to the Northern Territory. The Tigers haven't won a game yet this year. This is a bad look. Michael? Thoughts? Your thoughts? Oh, look, it's optics, and the, and the optics are bad. Oh, look, at the end of the day, it's not like he's gone up without approval from the board. They, they've ticked off on it. I get the look of it. The team's falling apart. The coach has got God knows how many weeks left, and he's having a holiday with his family during the school holidays. So, yes, I get that it looks as bad. Does it really make a difference to the, the way the organisation is run during that time while he's away? Probably not. Whether you were in watching Midnight All in Queensland last week, taking oh. a week off while we all carried your I didn't take a week off. <laughs> <laughs> I took a day off. And I'm not the CEO of the West Tigers. I love Justin Pascoe. He is the gift that keeps on giving that guy. <laughs> After the doco last year, then this. Take it in September. It's not like the Tigers are going to be doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't affect yeah, results, let's be honest. It doesn't affect how that but team it's plays. Team morale, but it's, it's an awful look They wouldn't have even yeah. known. The it's players wouldn't have even known he was gone. I just don't, don't think take, it's... I don't take all those... Yes, they would have. He's always in the dressing room. He's always there. Season? It's bad look, but does it actually make a difference no, to the organisation? No, it doesn't make a difference. That's but what happens if they lose by 50 on Monday? But on it's not the, it's, but don't it's, worry but about it's the players. Leadership. The this is away. the thing. What leadership, about... it's from the top down to the bottom. Yes. So Didn't you need to have strong leadership. Because you couldn't handle the footy department. I tell you who it's a bad look to. The fans and the members who are getting sick of coughing up their money and seeing you know, a team that's not performing properly, you know? Mm. And Justin Pascoe can say, well, he's done this commercially in the new centre of excellence. I bet you the 20,000 members that they've just gone past wouldn't care about any of that stuff. They just want to see him start playing finals footy. And it is. It's bad optics. It's really, really it's bad. Cool. If you're working in a job, and it's any job, and you've got the busiest time of year, the year, you've got a couple of months, and your boss goes away for that time, are you going to have the same he's, feeling? He's got a different job, though. His job doesn't revolve around the footy season. He'll be busy in October and November. They're selling merchandise, sorry, memberships and... His job does revolve around the football yeah, team. I, not, not That's why his job is. Why are you apologising for Justin Pasco so look. much? It's a bad look. I get that. But it doesn't make a difference to the organisation. If they're going to sack well, Michael McGuire next week, he needs to be here. Well... Is he going to be back? Well, Do we know? know? I don't know. When's he coming you back? Can talk, the club's been talking about he's on Zooms and FaceTimes, and, but it's not the same. It's not the same. You can't tell me that's the same as actually being in the office, being on the ground, being around the players, being around the coach, being at the game. As I said, if they come out on Monday and get hammered... You... It's naive. It's naive to think in the current climate and what's going on at that club... And the way that he made himself so public with that doco last year... You love that, that wasn't, doco, I love that doco. You love his, you love <laughs> but it can't, it can't... He can't... He's naive if he thought him going away at this time of the year with them winless is not going to be a story. Yeah. And it is. If, if it was another team and they were, you know, sitting round, say, third, fourth on the ladder at the moment, would it be... Would you have as much of an issue with it? Well, no. 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 Mm.
Winners have parties, losers have meetings. Isn't that what they say? Yeah, yeah, Zoom meetings. Or holidays, or holidays in Darwin. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom, Zoom meetings from Darwin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's different. It's a completely different scenario because the, you know if they're if they're if it's Melbourne or or the the Roosters or Manly CEO is away or Manly CEO is away, but if um, <laughs> to be fair, permanently, um, it's not the same. It's not the same because <laughs> the club's not in disarray or the appearance of disarray. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think we'd all like a little mid-season. Oh, how good would it be? But where we just had one. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in the mosh pit? I was in the mosh pit. I see Peter Garrett and spoiled your haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see some videos Mate, in the it, mosh pit. Look at yours. It's very thin. It's thin. And don't yeah, you yeah, start, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see a comb yeah, over yeah, yeah. from here. We're not getting personal here. It's just work. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here on the Sunday Footy Show. Stay with us, and we still have plenty more coming up after the break.